Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Form Check Friday, where we take your viewer submitted videos, we toss them up on this cool looking screen behind me, and I try to analyze everybody's lifting technique to provide people with a little bit more uh, things to think about in terms of maximizing the efficiency of their lifts. We try to offer a little bit of suggestions to help people become better lifters. So without further ado, we're gonna pick up right where we left off last week. Now, just as a quick aside, anybody who is interested in having their technique looked at, go ahead and submit to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. No other emails, just formcheckfriday at gmail.com. And don't forget to submit your videos. A lot of people write a big email and then don't attach a video, it's sad. All right, Thomas. So this is Thomas from last time. There were um, probably some really great comments, but unfortunately we're recording a very condensed version um, and I don't have those yet. So let's uh, let's take a look. He says he's squatting with some pain in his right, excuse me, rear delt rotator cuff hurts when he goes heavy and can't seem to figure out how to get a good sort of grip um, going on. So I think the biggest thing in terms of the shoulders uh, is that we're over rotating. So when you hit the bottom here, so even before you start, okay, let's, let's rewind right here. So before you go to squat, you're really wedging your shoulders forward. Now, what I would like to see is not wedging your shoulder or sorry, elbows, elbows, wedging the elbows forward. What I would like to see is pull the elbow down and back, almost like you're trying to touch the middle of your low back with your elbows. And that's going to help depress the shoulder blades and tighten all that wonderful stuff up in the upper back without the like over the top external rotation demands of pushing the elbows forward so much. And you can see if we watch this right shoulder throughout the range of movement, range of motion rather, there's a lot of wobbling and, and like sort of instability in there. It's forwards and then it's backwards and then it's shaking and it's the elbows are moving around a lot more than I would like. And I think that's because he's trying to pull super upright, push the elbows really forward and get really kind of overextended. I think he could do a better job of bracing the shoulder blades more like this actually. Like when you unrack and before you squat, I would argue that your upper back is in a better, tighter position here before you tuck everything over, like over tuck everything like crazy. This actually looks really good. And then you're kind of over tucking everything on the way down. The elbows are going forward to the point where they're in front of the torso. And I think that could be causing you some issues. Next up, we have Daniel. And uh, Daniel's a young guy. He's doing his first powerlifting meet um, pretty quick here. Let's pop this up so you guys can watch this while I read the email. So he says he's 16 years old. Um, he's 230 to 240 pounds. He's doing his first powerlifting meet on the 7th of December, 2019. So coming up almost a month from today. And that's today, the date recording, not, not when the video is going out. But um, best competition bench is 205. This is 140 with a... Uh, I'm not sure I understand that tempo notation um, for five reps. So he loses tightness in his back at the bottom of the reps, along with the tendency to slide up the bench mid set. He also has a bad habit of keeping his wrists in too much extension, he says. So let's see what's going on here. So I like this. He's pushing himself into a good position here. One thing that I definitely notice um, is that knees are above the hips. Now, this can be problematic for creating really good leg drive. So what I would probably do is bring these feet back a little more so that the top of the knee, almost like squat depth, is below the hip of the crease or the hip of the crease, the crease of the hip. So if we can get the knee down to like here, also this bench is just probably super low to the ground. I know these commercial benches and they're, they're low. So those kinds of things are, are working against you already before you even unrack. Yeah, so the next thing here, we're, we're definitely, like you said, the hands. I want that bar to be here, not here. Now, if your wrists cock back, whatever, but the bar should be low in the palm to the point where it's like kind of pulling the thumb out of the way, if that makes sense. So the bar's here as opposed to back here. Um, and sorry, my hands were in front of the mic, but the bar is here as opposed to here. That way um, it, it stays over your wrist and your elbow and it's a little bit easier to stack your joints. We actually have a video on that and bar placement in the hand and we'll link that up over here somewhere. I think I'm pointing to the right side anyways. But that's the next big thing is that, that it's not even the extension of the wrists, it's just that the bar is too high up in your hands. 
All right, let's see what else we got here. So this isn't bad, but we're a little elevated in the shoulders and I think that could be solved by unracking a little further. Pull this out a little more. Pull the shoulder blades down more. You, don't, you did a really good job of pulling shoulder blades together, but I think the shoulder blades could definitely go down more. Arch stays pretty big, pretty good. Bar path is okay. Again, I think the bar path would be a lot better if your wrists and hands weren't in kind of weird positions. So get that bar lower in your hands. That rep was really loose. You totally flattened, lost the arch, dropped the bar into your chest. We can see the plates even roll a little bit on that rep. So we need to also work on just being tighter throughout the bench press uh, reps as well. You press the bar super far back there. So I think there's also just consistency things, right? Like you're young, um, you're, you're coming up on your first meet, so you're obviously not super experienced. And I don't mean that in a bad way. You just haven't been doing it for very long. So continue to practice, continue to learn, continue to watch uh, informative Calgary Barbell content. And um, just, just keep practicing, right? Like bench often. Don't bench too heavy too often, uh, but bench heavy enough that it's tough. And really just try to practice technique. I think there's a couple of um, good tips that I gave you there. So hopefully that helps. Our next one comes from Jack here. Jack, 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 Armstrong. So he says he's really enjoying the form check videos. Here, I'll pop this up for everybody to enjoy. Really enjoying the form check vids. Here's a video of him deadlifting around an eight to nine RP, 145 kilos, trying to get to 170 by the end of the year, weighing about 70 kilos. Wondering if we can give him any pointers to stop his lower lat on the right side from getting a sharp pain in the lowering dead phase of the deadlift. Well, I would say, um, number one, I, I don't really think there's a huge use for the eccentric or lowering phase of the deadlift. So I would just not worry about it so much. Like don't be so nice to the bar on the way down. I mean, you're in a commercial gym here, so that might be a rule. You have to set it down gently. Um, but yeah, try to just kind of let it down. Also, instead of pushing your knees forward under the bar like that on the way down, hinge more. Um, Second rep here, it looks like we're really starting to see the butt sort of kick back and up. So right now in this position, we, we shouldn't be starting the deadlift again yet. I want you to tighten the shoulder blades, push your knees out a little bit and work on extending that back a little bit. So right now your grip is also super narrow. Let's bring that grip out a little, little bit wider so that you can push your knees out a little because as soon as the knees are crowded in, it becomes really hard to get a good extended back. As soon as the knees are out, it makes it a lot easier to get that pelvis into a better position. That's gonna depend on people's anatomy and stuff, but generally speaking. So I think pushing the knees out into your arms, this is a better, that was a better setup, but then you didn't create any tightness before you initiated the lift. So instead of just sitting your butt down, I want you to think about actively engaging your upper back against the bar, pulling your hips down, not just sinking, but pulling your hips down into position without letting the knees come forward and use that to kind of wedge yourself into position. We got to build that lifter's wedge, everybody. Wedge it in. Don't just sit down and pull. Wedge it in. Honestly, we have a sumo deadlift tutorial video, and I know that was a conventional deadlift, but if you look at the sumo deadlift video, there are so many parallels, like 90% of the video could be translated to a conventional deadlift if you just change the image on screen. It's a lot of the same cues, believe it or not. Next up, we have Jordan, and Jordan is doing some squats. All right, Jordan, let's see what's going on here. So he says he's been following the channel, would love some input. He's been training for two and a half years, recently started getting into strength training. Um, mostly trained like a gym bro for a while, as you can tell by my belly belt and short shorts. Hey, nothing wrong with short shorts, man. Also belly belt, that's an actual powerlifting belt it looks like, so that's a step ahead of most bros that I know. Um, currently doesn't have plans to compete, mostly because I have fairly limited hamstring mobility, which hinders my deadlift form and squat depth a little. Ah, don't limit yourself like that, man. First off, okay, let's just take a quick look at his squat depth. Is he hitting depth? You're right on the line. And this angle is going to look a little bit higher because the camera's literally on the floor. Yeah, I would just play with your stance width a little bit. You could probably get deeper pretty easily. 
Um, and in terms of like, yeah, I don't know. I don't really want to get into it, but hamstring mobility. Um, you, you just need to practice deadlifting more. I know this is your squat, but you said that your hamstring mobility hinders your deadlift form. Chances are you just need to practice deadlifting more. Put more time into it. Invest more time into it. If you want to compete, you can compete. Trust me. You don't need to, like... If you don't want to compete, then don't, by all means. But if you do want to compete, don't let hamstring mobility limit you from competing in powerlifting. And I say that very passionately because competing in powerlifting has been one of the most beneficial, um, life-changing experiences uh, I, for me. So yeah, I just, I don't want people to hold themselves back thinking that like, Oh, you know, I don't want to do this cause it might be hard. Like, yeah, it's going to be hard, but anyways, I'm going to stop ranting now. Um, so he's got lifting shoes on squatting low bar, uh, helps with depth, but he still thinks he's a little bit shy of comp depth. I think, yeah, you're probably pretty on the line. Let's try to get the camera on a chair or something next time. Um, not many judges are going to be crawling on the floor to look so this might be giving you a bit of a distorted view camera angles unfortunately do have a lot to do with how depth looks where you look at the squat from has a lot to do with how depth looks um so i think you're a lot closer than you might think you are um da -dum 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 -dum. cool yeah so let's uh let's get into the squat itself here and the mechanics of it so uh upper back brace looks pretty good we're getting into a pretty good hinge here knees are in a great position on the way down. We're not going excessively forward in the knees. Um, we're also not sitting too far back. We do kind of uh, lose the upper back a little bit as you hit the hole. So we're kind of seeing those elbows tuck really far forward, kind of like Thomas is out of the bottom. So let's try to keep those elbows back a little bit and um, just kind of pull them into each other behind your back, like pull them into the belt almost. Um, and I think a little bit of focus there could go a long ways as well. Just slow things down. This third rep is just rushed. You're just kind of bracing and then like falling into the bottom and it puts you in a weird position. So, um, I think you're a lot closer to being competition ready and competition capable than you think you are. So, um, yeah, hopefully that helps with the squat though. Just need to tighten that upper back. Maybe play with the stance. If you want to get depth a little easier, widen it up, narrow it up see if there's a way that you can get a little bit deeper by changing the angle of your feet even can sometimes have a pretty profound impact um but yeah we're gonna get to Jaden now so Jaden said he was a, a usapl coach as well and he's uh has a competition in about four weeks and this was sent to us on october 20th um says he loves our videos not only the Here's a video of his top set on bench, PR 243 pounds, also back off triple. Just wondering if we had any constructive criticism. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So flat. So flat out of the rack, man. So he takes all this time setting his, his arch really, really well. And then when he goes to unrack, just loses it all. Yeah, such a huge shift. So when you go to put your hands on the bar, Here's, here's the line where the bar would touch. It's right, right along here. Hold on, that's even a little bit low. Um, so right, right about there. Now, when you actually unrack the bar, look how much lower your chest goes. You're totally losing your arch when you unrack, man. You gotta be able to stay bigger, tighter, taller as you unrack. And it's even more evident on this rep set here. So again, decent setup, good shoulder position. And then we go to unrack and everything just flattens right out. So that's probably the number one thing you could work on is trying to stay big and not like pulling your ribs down. I know that's a really popular cue for squatting and deadlifting, but not on the bench, man. You want those ribs up as high as you can get them. There also like shouldn't just shouldn't be that much change between uh, the trunk position when you're unracking, like during the unrack from before to after. There shouldn't be that much change. So whether you need to get a handoff, change your rack height, or just change how you're. Another thing that might help is set yourself up a little further this way, so you don't have to bring the bar out as far. 
but there's just like a lot going on with your unrack. There's a lot of instability, a lot of movement, a lot of changing around and things between getting the bar out of the rack and starting your press. And I think that's probably negatively impacting you. So that'd be the number one thing that I would work on there. My man. All right, our last one here comes from Hakon. And um, Hakon is doing some deadlifts. I'm gonna pop one of them up here and then we'll read the email. So he's got two videos here. One is a set of eight at 80 kilos and one is a set of, one is a single at 110. So some context, he says he's been lifting for about one year now, deadlifting for two months. His current max is 110 kilos. His main problem is that he primarily feels it in his back, not his legs. Now that may or may not be a problem. You might just have a weak back, right? Your back is full of muscles, just like the rest of your body. Um, I think people often overreact and, and think that, oh, my back feels sore, therefore I did something wrong because a lot of people have this really negative connotation with any kind of back discomfort, sensation, pain at all. People think it's like, oh, I'm gonna paralyze myself. And I'm not saying, Hakon, that you are one of these people, um, but I do want to just make a little bit of a sort of disclaimer. Your back being sore from deadlifting is fine and normal and you are okay and you will be okay. Um, now, if there's some tips to get you to maybe kind of feel it a little bit differently or feel a little bit more comfortable through the movement, feel like you're, you're more of a cohesive unit instead of like just feeling it in your back, then hopefully our viewers can give you some of those. And I will critique your video next week. Absolutely. You're not just getting thrown to the mercy of, uh, of our viewers. Although nine times out of 10, I'm able to scroll through the, con uh, the comment section and find some pretty useful, pretty uh, spot on advice. So, um, yeah, we'll go through one more time. This is a set of eight and then his single. Actually, we'll watch his single a couple more times first. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you have any advice for Hakon, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. Leave a like on the video if you liked it and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you guys are interested in more content like this, go ahead and join us on twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell. Almost every Friday at 12 p.m. MST, we do a live stream where we answer questions. We do form checks live for people in the chat. Um, and it's a it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool place to hang out with our community and really starting, um, or sorry, really enjoying doing it more and more as time goes on. So again, if you're interested in having your videos looked at, submit them to formcheckfriday at gmail.com and we will see you all in that next video. Uh, bye bye <laughs>